NASA has confirmed that Ganymede, one of the moons orbiting Jupiter, has a saltwater ocean lying below its icy exterior, making it a viable location for life to flourish. The scientists studying the planet and its outlier moons through the Hubble telescope shared the news in a statement Thursday, saying that the ocean may bear more liquid than all the water on Earth combined. A research team helmed by the University of Cologne's Joachim Sauer first conceived of using the telescope to research what's below the moon's exterior for a study published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Space Physics. We have space physics now. Ganymede is an anomaly among moons. It is the largest known moon in our solar system and the only one that generates its own magnetic field. This attribute produces a phenomenon called aurorae that circle Ganymede's poles. Because Ganymede is situated so close to its mother planet, any changes to Jupiter's magnetic field directly affect that of its moon. So when Jupiter's magnetic field shifts due to the planet's rotation, Ganymede's aurora rock back and forth in a sort of cosmic mating dance. Observing the interplay between the planet and its moon, scientists surmised that the ocean works against Jupiter's magnetic pull, causing Ganymede to rock less violently than they had anticipated. Once they had observed the planet with the Hubble telescope, the researchers built computer models, of course, that supported speculation that Ganymede has a salty ocean. So frozen, but we're nowhere. Researchers believe the subterranean ocean is ten times as deep as the Earth's oceans. Because it sounds cooler. Rawr. And it may not be the last body of water to be discovered. During a press conference on Thursday, Jim Green, NASA's director of planetary science, said, No, not really. But he may as well. The solar system is now looking like a pretty soggy place. Since water is necessary to sustain life, it's possible that these oceans may confirm the long-suspected presence of life on other planets or on moons such as Titan and Enceladus. NASA has speculated since the 1970s that there was water on Ganymede. A 2002 Galileo mission confirmed <laughs> I can't help it. A 2002 Galileo mission confirmed that the moon had its own magnetic field, but the findings weren't concrete enough to corroborate suspicion that Ganymede had a vast ocean beneath its outer crust until now. In a statement, an assistant administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate, John Brunseld, said, A deep ocean under an icy crust of Ganymede opens up further exciting possibilities for life beyond Earth. I guess they don't want to admit that there's moss on stones on Mars. There are a couple gentlemen named Theodore Holden and Troy McLaughlin. They've had the intestinal fortitude to put together an explanation where us humans could have come from. Seeing that the Earth is full of nocturnal creatures and man is not very capable of seeing at night implies that Earth went through a long dark period. Without assistance, they have ascertained that we have come from somewhere else other than the Earth, a bright place. Thus the Ganymede hypothesis was born. And I'm just going to show a minute or two of this but I definitely recommend watching the video. Taking a bold step, I think, because usually people will deem someone a nut when they try to talk about how we got here. But yet, here we are, so we are living proof that something happened. But anyway, I really like the information that uh, and the graphics that Troy puts together in this video. And... The information I like the most is the information about Herbig Harrow objects. Now, these objects are being seen everywhere in space now, and mainstream astronomers are saying that it's a star shooting gas or something, but it's completely different. And you know electricity is a perfect attractor of matter, if you will. Have you ever seen a room ionizer? I have one. 
and the thing collects dust like a magnet so there is something to it and I just wanted to show you a couple of minutes I recommend that you watch the video I think it needs more attention it's it's an excellent video whether you agree with it or not they have to be commended on having the guts to actually take that step here's a little piece of it share a native axial tilt with the Sun the remaining other planets do not a startling question arises is it possible that our solar system is in fact a collection of original native planets catastrophically displaced by the later arrival of a group of captured rogue planets is there possibly a period in our solar system's ancient history when the planets Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, Mars, Venus and even Earth were nowhere to be seen and Jupiter reigned supreme with the Sun in observing other solar systems we can see that gas giants often orbit closely to their host star and that many of these so-called hot Jupiters may be brown dwarf stars complete with their own collections of moons if our solar system originally began with only Jupiter and Mercury as its original native planets evidenced by their axial tilts being the same as the Sun's then it would not be amiss to suggest that Jupiter may have shared the same orbital characteristics of many gas giant exoplanets being discovered today the problem here is that many of these hot Jupiters are too close to their suns to suggest they or their moons might be habitable they are simply too hot however there are a few gas giant exoplanets that have been discovered orbiting their host star in what is called the habitable zone and these give hope to the theory that their moons may support the needed attributes for the emergence of life as we know it should closer inspection of these habitable zone gas giants prove them to be brown dwarf stars that is something entirely possible given the blurred lines between gas giants and brown dwarfs then the possibility of liquid water moons becomes enticingly likely brown dwarf stars are known carriers of water sometimes copious amounts of water so it is entirely likely that any moons orbiting them will accumulate a portion of this water in the case of the Ganymede hypothesis our Sun is postulated to have started life as a protostar or proto-sun at the center of its own Herbig Harrow object strung out along the powerful Birkeland current that formed our protosun were a range of planets and brown dwarf stars the planets Jupiter and Mercury including Jupiter's moons formed in the plasma beads of the protosun's northern jet while the planets Saturn Uranus Neptune Mars and Earth formed in the plasma beads of the protosun's southern jet it is most likely that at this time both the planets Jupiter and Saturn originally formed as brown dwarf stars complete with their own collection of moons and planets at some point the protosun's powerful Birkeland current failed and the protosun was electrically severed from its future planets continuing along its northern course the protosun eventually captured and collected the planet Mercury and then the brown dwarf Jupiter along with Jupiter's four moons this became the basis of the antique solar system as discussed by the authors of Cosmos and Collision in which Jupiter's moons may have once been liquid water worlds highly conducive to life as we know it at a much later date the gas giant planet now known as Uranus caught up to the protosun's antique solar system and was catastrophically captured by the Sun the result being Uranus knocked on the side and left in the bizarre orientation we see it in today at an even much later date the brown dwarf Saturn along with the planets Neptune to its north and Mars and Earth to its south caught up to the Sun and via a series of catastrophic encounters was also eventually captured 
This highly destructive epoch in our solar system's history saw a catastrophic rearrangement of all planets involved in this process as they electrically discharged and equalized with the Sun, and even saw the birth of a new planet that would later be called Venus as the brown dwarf Saturn fissioned spectacularly and ejected a piece of its core under intense electrical stress from the Sun's much more powerful electrical field. These catastrophic events are the origins of world mythology, witnessed by humanity and recorded for posterity. Over time, both Jupiter and Saturn were reduced to gas giant status and pushed to the outer realms of the Sun's new solar system, while the terrestrial planets collected at much closer orbits, with the Earth finding itself fortuitously placed in the Sun's habitable zone, where it is today. I put the links down in the description for you to watch the whole video. I completely recommend it. And that's not all. There's another guy. There's a gentleman that his name is Mars Anomalies and Beyond. He is stating that there are still cities on Ganymede. He has a, about a 30 minute video on uh, alien cities on Jupiter's moon. I'll put the link for that below too. It's definitely worth watching. You have to have a little bit of a grasp of the electric universe theory in order for this to make any sense to you. Thank mm -hmm. you.